Uh, hello everyone, I'm Arthur Chen, and today I'm going to introduce you the workshop paper Unveiling Misogyny Memes, a multimodal analysis of the modality effect on identification. Before going to the real content, here is a disclaimer. This presentation contains content that might be disturbing to some audience. So the term memes was first defined by Richard Dawkins in 1976. It's describing the analogies between the cultural evolution and biological evolutions. Uh, it suggests that cultural phenomena can also replicate, mutate, and uh, adapt to the process of imitation, selection, and transmissions. In today's digital era, memes has become a popular communication method that often reflects societal attitudes and prejudices. Among all the funny memes all over the internet, there's a type of a meme called misogyn misogyny memes. It is a form of meme that explicitly discriminated against the women in various aspects, for example, such as body shaming or stereotyping. Beyond the sarcasm and the humor nature of the memes, these types of memes can really bring the potential severe impact into the uh, reality world. As suggested by a study of the Pacellos, this meme targeting female gender may convert online aggressive messages into offline sexual stereotyping, aggression, or even gender inequality. So in our paper, we aim to utilize a multimodal analysis regarding the pre large language model to identify and analyze misogynous memes. Specifically, we want to determine how each modality contributes to the identification of a misogynous memes. And the second point that we want to investigate how the fairness of performance of different modalities, measuring the extent of bias that the different modality inherit from the data set. The last point that we want to carry out an error analysis investigating the depths of the memes identification, offering an insight to the model's limitations. So let's jump into the methodology sections. Here is a workflow diagram for, our, for how we design our experiment. For unit modality sections, the memes were separated into two parts, the super text and image basis. For the textual modality, th uh, things is quite straightforward. Uh, the super text is tokenized, embedded, and fit into the bird model to make a prediction based on them. Now for the image modality, things become a little bit more tricky as there's a natural gap between how the model handling the information from different modality. If we want to compare the results from different mo modality in a fair manner, so we want to rule out that gap as much as possible. The method that we use here is that we use a pre-trained clip model to generate a descriptive captions and then fed that captions into the BERT model, the same way as what we did with, uh, with the textual modalities. And in that way, the only difference here is that the information provided by images and the text. Now for the multimodality sections, uh, due to its ability to handle in the text input and image input at the same time, which are fitting a super text and image at the same time to the pre-trained uh, multimodal large, uh, large language models and make a prediction based on the both channel of the information. The result from the multimodal uh, modality section will be evaluated against the unimodality section uh, to enhance our results. So as for the fairness analysis, we have adopt the equalized odd as our matrix here, uh, which is by definition uh, focused on the similar outcome across all sensitive attributes for any given labels. Practically and equivalently, uh, based on the study of the hearts in 2016, equalized odd can also be regarded as uh, it focused on the true positive read and the false positive read uh, should be similar across sensitive, uh, sensitive attribute groups. Uh, in these cases, we can calculate that in the uh, lower uh, formulas, which uh, takes the maximum differences of the true positive rate and the differences of the false positive rate between different groups. Here is uh, our experiment setting. Uh, 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 this is a list of the models that we have used for, the, uh, for this experiment. For the textual modality, we use the bird-based uncase, which is a typical model that is frequently used for handling the textual uh, input. And for image uh, modality, like I, like I have explained in the diagrams, uh, we use a pre-trained clip model to generate the caption and use the uh, same variant of the bird uh, to handle in that captions. For the multi-modality section, we have used, uh, we have chosen the mplug plug and open flamingo as both of them are multi-model large language model that use different but uh, effective strategy to uh, incorporate a basic large language model with a visual module to uh, integrate information from both uh, textual and the uh, uh, image uh, modalities. The data set that we used is GoldBench uh, data set. It is a, a comprehensive uh, memes bench, uh, benchmark data set that comprises over 6,000 uh, memes encapsulating into different themes, such as cyberbullying, sexism, hate speech, et cetera. 
Firstly, we have chosen on misogyny memes as it's obviously fit the scope of our research. And you may notice that we also chose another subset, which is harmfulness subset. Uh, the reason for this is that for the fairness analysis, the misology subset is the uh, gender related groups. And we also need another uh, non gender related group as a kind of the control group to calculate that difference between a TPR and FPR to generate the equalized odds. That's the reason why we brought in the uh, harmfulness subset here. So for the first part of the uh, uh, results sections, uh, here is a performance of the models uh, for the pre, uh, pre trained models and also for the model after fine tuning. And uh, the uh, first uh, uh, straightforward observation is that uh, the fine tuning can boost the performance for all the model and all the modalities. Uh, further than that, there will be a few findings that can be summarized out of this two table. The first finding that multi model models, they all have better performance than unimodality. That means textual modality and the uh, uh, visual modality, they can complement each other to uh, achieve overall better results. The second finding that the textual modality contributes more to the prediction than visual modality as it score higher for both uh, two performance matrix um, in both, uh, both cases. The last finding that although the textual modality has higher performances, the visual mod modality inherits less bias from the data set compared to the visual modality, uh, textual modality uh, due to its score lower in the equalized odd. Uh, especially in the fine tuning cases. Okay, uh, so the second section uh, part of the results section, we carry out a simple error analysis uh, by plotting the error uh, percentage bar chart based on the different confidence interval of the model's prediction. Uh, you may notice that there is a, high, a relatively high uh, error percentage in the confidence integral from 0.3 to 0.6. After a bit of the investigation, uh, uh, we find out that it's because the instance within this range often share a significant ambiguity and similarity, it making it uh, harder for the model to classify them accurately. The highest error rates here actually highlight the complexity of understanding implicit feature, such as metaphor or analogies. As a supplement to the second section of the results part, uh, we also carried out a candidate bias element identification tasks. As a previous result has suggested that um, the textual modality actually contributed the majority to identification of the misogynist uh, uh, memes. And we sampled 20 misogynist memes and we tried to generate a bias score uh, uh, on the main token of their super text. This is how we do it. We mask out the uh, significant to that, uh, the, the token that we consider to be significant in the super text for those samples. And we ask a model to predict again based on the masking, uh, mask the to uh, super text. And the bias score is actually the differences is calculated by based on differences of the model's confidence in the prediction before and after. So this bias score actually suggests the influence power that this token have on the uh, model prediction. So uh, uh, based on the result from this table, uh, we can notice that, uh, and also these tokens are manually annotated as misogynous and non misogynous. And we can notice that the misogynous token have generally higher uh, by the score than the non misogynist token. That means the identification of such a misogynist textual token actually played a crucial role in the identification of the meme, uh, misogynist memes, especially for the token that refer more refer to the aggressive languages. The model tend to focus more on these tokens when they make uh, uh, misogynist predictions. But also on the other hand, this table actually uh, explains some uh, sort of the failure that the model may experience during the predictions. Uh, for example, here is a meme that a uh, model failed to classify as a misogynist because uh, the mean, some of the mean tokens such as MBA or uh, board, they get a relatively low score in this uh, identification task, which means that the misogynist information in this kind of the memes is more implicit and it requires model to have a more comprehensive understanding of the full context, which is sometimes beyond the model's capabilities. So uh, after the result, I want to talk a little bit of the, about the limitation of future works. So the bias mitigation method, the uh, first point is that bias mitigation method should be implemented. So we can carry out a further analysis on probably the trade-off between accuracy and the fairness performance to have a better understanding about, uh, for example, the robustness and the stability of the different modality in terms of fairnesses. The second point is that the numbers of models included in our comparison is limited, highlighting there's a need to uh, expand the scope by bringing, uh, for example, more uh, up-to-date uh, large language models as well as a, a larger data set, for example, like uh, MMI data sets. The third point is that uh, 
maybe we can also employ some explainable AI technology like uh, SHAP or LIM to, uh, that can be used to um, uh, review further uh, what kind of the different knowledge provided by different modalities and how they uh, supplement each other in the multimodality cases. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I think that's the end of my presentation.